really significant for me. And um, as I say, you know, to go over there and, you know, we knew the Soviets had these great big guys and everything. And I, I believe there was one guy, one guy on their team, and I think I still remember his name. I think his name was John Krumish. He was like seven feet six, and he was a giant. He was a giant. And I'll never forget that, you know, we were playing this game very competitive, very physical. I mean, dirty. It was dirty. It, it, the game got out of hand in our favor, and they put John Krumish in the game. And the great thing about it, he wasn't a really efficient runner. And you could tell when he was creeping up on you, okay, bang, 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 here he's coming up the floor. And um, after the game was over, I said, my gosh, we'd heard so much that they were really, really good. Uh, that there was a lot of adrenaline flowing in that locker room, a lot. And afterwards, I said, my gosh, I think we won by 27 points. That was our closest game. But it was, um, that was a really significant moment in my life. And probably the proudest possession I have is my, um, my gold medal and my uniform. Back then, uh, we didn't even think we were going to lose because we were so good. I mean, we were a great basketball team because all the players on the team had great skills. All the players on the team had great skills, basketball skills, dribbling, shooting, defense. We could play shutdown defense. We had the whole package. Was it four Hall of Famers, eight former NBA All-Stars, and of course, four rookies of the year in a row from 61 to 64. I mean, that what what did Coach Newell? What were the things that he um, preached to you guys for you to develop as great basketball players? Well, I think first of all we had great people on our team. Coach Newell was respected. He was he and Coach Wooden were probably looked at as the two greatest coaches of their time. Plus, we had a bunch of players that knew how to play the game and there were not any egos involved and we wanted to win as a team representing the United States of America and I had said for years and it came out here on that team when I got open I never got missed I had said that for years and that's the truth because the ball was distributed so well and we could play all phases of the game you know if we need to shut down the other team we could play shut down defense. We rebounded the ball really well and we were quicker than any other team so we could fast break. But we also had such great basketball skills that we could play slow down too. Rome was the site of the 1960 Olympic Games, an event described by one writer as the Olympics that changed the world. Ten of its 12 members go on to play professionally in the NBA. Now the crazy thing about it is two players that never made that team, Havlicek and Lenny Wilkins, they were alternates.
up there with Oscar Roberts. And that time only two people got up here to receive the gold medal. Um, I can't, I wish people knew what that felt like for me. Uh, the emotion the, um, that was going through your body, uh, the elation, um, the joy, uh, because I really felt for the first time, you know, done something not for West Virginia or my high school team, but we'd done something for the country. And as I say, those were troubled times then. And um, it was, every time I hear the national anthem, every time, and I've heard it a lot, and you've heard it a lot, every time I hear the national anthem, I, it, I immediately zap back to that point in time. And so it's, it was really significant for me.